taking the time to attend today's webinar, Determining Alcohol Misuse, Your Options Explained. I'm Liam Feasy, I'm the Client Services Manager at Lextox and I'll be delivering today's webinar. Um, before we start, just a few um, points, to, points to note. All attendees have been set to mute, so this is to reduce background noise and to assure you can all hear me. This is a live broadcast, so unfortunately we won't be taking any questions during the webinar. However, if you do have any questions, please email us via experts at lextalks.co.uk and we can then prepare a, a response back to you accordingly. Today's webinar will last approximately 20 minutes. It is being recorded um, and we will share the link with you after the event. Okay, so let's make a start. So as an introduction, a 2017 Children's Commissioner report revealed that over 700,000 children in England are living in families that have vulnerabilities. 15,000 of these are with an adult receiving alcohol treatment. A separate article reported that over 200,000 children are being raised by alcoholic parents in Britain. So there are many ways to test for alcohol misuse depending on the situation and the desired outcome. And today we'll be focused on, the, on those that are used in the protection of children and family law cases and child care proceedings. So today I'm going to discuss hair, blood, nail testing as well as talk about continuous testing using Scrum. I'll then provide a snapshot of all of the testing methods as a comparison and to finish with um, a conclusion and then how you can contact us afterwards. Okay, so to begin with, hair testing. So the hair alcohol test is looking for two biomarkers. So these are substances which are produced by the body upon consumption of alcohol. So these are ETG, which is ethyl glucuronide, and FAEE, which is ethyl palmitate. So the detection of these markers in hair can be used to provide a suggestion of chronic excessive alcohol use over a period of time, generally over a period of months. Now, chronic excessive alcohol use is defined as 60 grams of alcohol, which is seven and a half units of alcohol every day for the period of time covered by the test. So this would equate to 52 and a half units of alcohol a week. Okay. So the hair test is there to show the more repeated use of alcohol over a period of time. If we were to get a not detected ETG and FAE result, it doesn't mean that the individual has consumed no alcohol. So in this instance, if we had a not detected result, the result is therefore showing that there's been no suggestion of chronic excessive alcohol use. So that's important to note if it's a not detected result. Somebody could still be consuming alcohol, but it would be at levels below what's considered to be chronic excessive. If the individual had no scalp hair, we can collect and analyze body hair for the detection of the alcohol markers, BTG and FAEE. So in this case, we could collect hair and analyze hair from the chest, arm or leg regions for the detection of the, of the alcohol markers. In respect of the scalp hair analysis, the maximum time we can cover is six months. And for this, we need about approximately six centimeters worth of scalp hair. So, and this is in accordance with the Society of Hair Testing Consensus. So unlike drug testing, where we can go back as long as the hair allows, with the hair alcohol test, um, with scalp hair, the maximum time period we can cover is six months, but we can cover shorter periods. Less than six months is, if there isn't sufficient hair to do six months. And it's recommended that the ETG and the FAE analysis is used in conjunction with, with other tests. For example, it should be, be recommended it's used alongside the blood alcohol testing. So with the blood alcohol testing, there's two tests that we undertake. The first is carbohydrate deficient transferrin test. So this is a biochemical test looking for changes in the blood, which can be caused by um, alcohol consumption. 
So it's a good marker to help assess recent chronic excessive alcohol consumption. And generally, the CDT test would cover the past two to four weeks. Now, the liver function test provides a snapshot in time of potential liver damage. Um, so this is saying at the time of the sample collection, at that moment in time, if there's any liver damage potentially due to um, alcohol use. Now, the liver function test isn't alcohol specific. So other factors such as um, health conditions or um, medication can affect liver function. So we'd recommend that the liver function test isn't used in isolation and that it is used alongside um, other tests such as the CDT test, the carbohydrate deficient transparent test, or alongside the hair test. Now, nail clipping testing, um, this is a relatively new analysis and it's not an analysis that we would normally undertake at Lextox. Um, however, we are researching the detection of drugs, metabolites, and alcohol markers in nail clippings to be able to provide this service in the future if we're confident of the, the testing validity. Now, there is no current independent society similar to that of the Society of Hair Testing that has agreed on a consensus for the nail, nail clippings and therefore for the interpretation of the results. As such, we'd always recommend hair testing over nail clipping testing. And as there is very little scientific published data on the use of nail clippings to confidently interpret the analysis results, if you do use it, then I would recommend that you used it with caution. Okay. Now, hair and blood is very good at looking back historically of an individual's alcohol consumption. So as I said, the hair would cover a number of months, maximum six months in scalp hair, and the blood would cover the past two to four weeks with the CDT test. Now, the SCRAM bracelet is very good at continually testing for alcohol um, on a day-by-day -day basis. So you can get a profile of an individual's alcohol consumption over a period of time, for example, to see if somebody is using alcohol during a period of contact. So essentially, the SCRAM bracelet is a device, an electronic device, which is worn on the ankle of the participant. And it tests for alcohol every 30 minutes of every day, seven days a week. And it's testing for alcohol, which is um, excreted in sweat across, uh, excreted in sweat across the skin. So when alcohol is consumed, um, the majority of the alcohol is excreted from the body via urine, but 1% of the alcohol is excreted across the skin in sweat and perspiration. So the scram bracelet is testing for alcohol in the sweat and perspiration. The, um, so the, the bracelet is worn on the ankle and a base station is installed in the donor's home home address. So the, the bracelet records the data and then wirelessly communicates this to the base station twice a day. That base station then relays that information back to us where then we can um, interpret the results and then we can give you a report either weekly or every 30 days of the, the testing um, period. So the bracelet does have um, some tamper-proof technology so it has an infrared beam, which can have measures the distance between the bracelet and the ankle. If this is broken, then we can report on whether there is a, um, a tamper event during the, uh, during the testing time period. Now, the fitting and the removal of the bracelet is undertaken by a Lextox sample collector to ensure the process is simple and straightforward for yourself and the participants. So these are some uh, example profiles that you will receive um, if you are able to have scrum, scrum testing. Um, if we look at the first graph, um, if we look at the black line, you can see that the black line is going up in sharp peaks. Now the black line is the TAC. So this is the transdermal al alcohol concentration. So this is the measurements that we get from the scrum bracelet. So in the top graph, we can see that those peaks are going up sharply and fairly steadily 
and so this would indicate the daily consumption of alcohol. The red line is the temperature and the blue line is the infrared beam. If we move to the, the bottom graph, you can see that the black line is going up very sharply, almost in straight lines. So this would be indicative of environmental alcohol exposure. Um, so such as somebody using products containing alcohol in and around where the bracelet is fitted, such as um, perfume, aftershaves and moisturisers, for example, or working in an environment, an alcohol rich environment, such as a, a bar um, or a bakery, for example. So we can tell the difference between consumed alcohol and environmental alcohol exposure. Okay, so this is just a snapshot of um, all of the, the testing methods. Um, so hair, the window of detection can go back at maximum up to six months in accordance with the Society of Hair Testing Guidelines. Um, so this is often used when trying to determine an account, a historic account of somebody's chronic excessive alcohol consumption over a number of months. Um, and it does take approximately two weeks for the hair to grow sufficiently above the scalp for it to be included in the cut hair sample. Now this is important because we take two weeks off the sample collection date. So say for example the, the say for example the sample is collected um, at, the, at the end of January, we take two weeks off, so the time period will start from the middle of January backwards. Blood. And blood is very good for looking at more recent um, alcohol consumption, i.e. the past two to four weeks with a CDT test, or um, at the, that moment in time with a liver function test. Now, in terms of considerations, um, it can be invasive, and it can be uncomfortable for those individuals who are not comfortable um, donating blood or have a fear of needles. And the liver function test is recommended not to be used in isolation. Um, now clipping and to summarise, um, the window of detection is currently unconfirmed, so it's not, um, we're not sure on the time period that can actually be obtained from a nail clipping uh, analysis. Um, and as, as because of the lack of scientific um, data, it's unable to determine the, the levels actually in the nail clipping itself. So in terms of consideration, there's no agreed consensus for the nail analysis of nail clippings and therefore the interpretation of the results. So if you do use it, uh, I recommend it's used with caution. And then um, continuous testing using the, the scrum bracelet. So this tests alcohol every 30 minutes of every day that the bracelet is worn. Typically the bracelet is worn for 30, 60 or 90 days. And as I said, you'd get a report every 30 days or weekly within that time period, that testing time period. So when to use Scram is to continuously monitor alcohol consumption over a period of time. It could be useful if the individual has no hair um, at all, um, or if you need to see if somebody is using alcohol during periods of contact, for example. And in terms of considerations, um, it requires specialist equipment and fitting. Um, i.e. one of our uh, collectors would have to go and fit the bracelets and the base station units in the donor's home. Okay, um, so to, to conclude, um, LexTox provides both hair and blood testing for alcohol markers, and we suggest that it's best to use both of these in conjunction with each other. Now, hair and blood tests are undertaken on different alcohol markers in different matrices and covering different time periods. So therefore, it is possible for a donor to provide a positive hair alcohol marker test and a negative result for the blood alcohol markers. Now, this isn't saying that one test is correct and the other test is wrong. It's just that they're two very different tests covering different periods of time. So if the hair is detected, for example, it could indicate that historically, over the past three months, an individual and there's a suggestion that the individual has been using chronic excessive levels of alcohol. But if the blood is not detected, then it could indicate that more recently um, they've reduced their alcohol content potentially below that of chronic excessive levels. 
Um, Het has think for alcohol market is able to provide evidence of historical alcohol consumption over the past few months, but it is unable to show patterns of alcohol consumption or absence within that monthly time period. And that's because the test is an integrated result over the whole three month or the whole six month. So the hair test it isn't there to show binge drinking or social drinking events. It's there to show the more repeated use of alcohol over a period of time. So blood testing for alcohol markers um, can provide evidence of more recent alcohol consumption i.e. the past two to four weeks with the, the CDT test. And the SCRAM bracelet is good for monitoring alcohol consumption subsequent to the bracelet being fitted. And hair, blood and SCRAM uh, testing are commonly used and accepted as legally defensible evidence in child protection and child residence cases um, in family law cases. Okay. So, um, to ensure that you, your results for the filing date, we can prepare a bespoke quotation, prepare the same day as your request. Um, we can, we've got a, a UK-wide network of sample collectors that can usually collect a sample within about 48 hours notice. We have a very fast turnaround time, so our average is four working days from receiving the sample into our laboratory. So if we receive the, the sample at the beginning of the week, you should have the results by the, by the end of the week. The hair analysis results and expert reports are prepared by our own experts at our Cardiff lab. So we're available to discuss the results afterwards. And we are a quality assured laboratory. So we have ISO 17025 UCAS accredited uh, accreditation. So this ensures the accuracy and the um, reliability of our analysis results. Okay, so that concludes today's um, short webinar on alcohol testing. If you do have any questions um, on today's webinar, please email us at experts at lextox.co.uk and we can prepare a response back to you. Um, I would like to thank you for your time again today. Um, and we hope to find, uh, hope to see you at our next event, which is called Family Ties. DNA relationship testing for family law, and that will be delivered on the 20th of March at 12 p.m. Okay, thank you for your time today. Thank you.